Doug Goldstein, eFuturist with Health Innovation Media, and here we are after Dr. Clasco's wonderful, wonderful, marvelous talk. And I will tell you that there are visionaries and there are leaders, but then there are people who get things done, and you're one of those people who are a visionary, a leader, and actually getting things done. And you threw out some approaches to getting things done that I think will revolutionize healthcare. Can you comment on some of the highlights of your talk that you just shared with 750 plus leaders sure. in this industry? Sure, well first of all, you know, I start out by the book I'm writing is I Messed Up Healthcare in America, Put Your Name Here, because everybody blames everybody else. And I said it's really liberating once you start looking at what you can do, whether you're a patient or a provider. So just a couple things that, that, that are very different. We're looking at Jefferson going from a blockbuster model of come over to my store or my hospital, which by the way is very expensive, to a Netflix model of, hey, I provide great care, let me bring it to your home, to your hospital, et cetera. So we've gone from a hub and spoke model, in most cases, a, an academic medical center buys a community hospital to get more patients down to the most expensive place on the planet, and then we're amazed the costs don't go down, to a hub and hub model. We're partnering with Abington Health Network, a great community medical center, in a hub and hub model where we share governance, same amount of Abington folks, same amount of Jefferson folks, and the goal getting Jefferson Care out of Jefferson, because it costs $35 to park here, and we're more expensive than Abington is, over to Abington. We're looking at a telehealth program, not just to prove that we can do telehealth, but so that patients could access our physicians from their home, from urgent care centers, from Abington, to, from other community hospitals, from kiosks, and only have to come down to Jefferson when they really, really, really need to. So here we have the Jefferson School of Population Health training future leaders, and here we have uh, Jefferson Health partnering hub and hub, disrupting and creating a whole new care paradigm. It's unbelievable. Well, it's really cool because I think, you know, David Nash, who leads this conference, literally uh, started the first school of population health in the country here at, at Jefferson. And when you start to think population health and not think me, then everything changes. I gave an example of a video of a guy who had had a brain operation that lived three hours away from us that a year ago would have had to spend eight hours driving to Philadelphia, seeing the doctor, looking at his incision and, and going back. We actually showed the interaction at home with his kids at 8 a.m. He had the post-op visit and he was at work by 8.30. That's a disruption. You saved him money, you saved him time, and you made him more productive. But not only that, on the video, his kids were there who were worried. He had just had brain surgery. And they're saying, oh, Daddy, it looks like you're okay. Is this your doctor? Because you could see Dr. Rosenwasser. It, it puts the family into it. We started virtual rounds. Think about this. You have a parent that's in a cancer center or someplace, and you're worried about them. Mom, what did the doctor say? I don't know. It was like 530 in the morning. I have no idea what, what he or she said. You're worried. We create virtual rounds where family members can participate in rounds wherever they are. These are logical things that don't take disruptions in technology. They take disruptions in thinking that I'm not thinking as a hospital operator. I'm thinking as a population health person. It struck me. Uh, we're all part of the problem, but we're all the solution. And that's my big takeaway. But you also coined this term extensivist. Yeah. So, so the concept of extensivist, it's not something I coined, but, but it actually started on the West Coast, is some, some of the times when you start to think logically, it's amazing that we haven't figured this out. So we have a readmission crisis in this country, right? So you think about it, we have family docs that aren't allowed into the hospital, we have hospitalists that aren't allowed out of the hospital, and somehow we're amazed that the handoff doesn't happen. So the concept of extensivist is that we take the hospitalists that took care of these very, very sick patients, transplant patients, whatever, and they're responsible for their care for 90 days afterwards. Instead of them going back to their community hospital, they have two-way electronic communication, they have telehealth opportunities. We can knock readmissions down by about 70%. Again, without new technology, just thinking differently. Right, leveraging the technology that we all have in our pockets, right. that we have in our homes, where we can transport Jefferson Care and the doctors and your whole teams to my home. And in fact, not just my home, wherever I am. So you think about it. I, 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 I always think about Steve Jobs in 2000. He thought he was able to think what's going to be obvious 10 years from now and do it today. When he put out the iPod, 
It wasn't because he wanted to get 200 MP3s. He saw that digital age. And he said, do it now. All my colleagues recognize that healthcare is going to transform. Healthcare is going to go to where the patient is. Most of us in academic medical centers don't want to do it till it's obvious that it needs to be done. And then we whine when the Walgreens and the entrepreneurial companies do it over us. So we at Jefferson really said we're, we want to be the entrepreneurial, academic, positively disruptive academic medical center. And you know what, in interacting with a number of your associates, you've really energized, and you know what, you've really activated what's already inside the people around you. Well, I, th I think, you know, it's fun to have fun. And there's been so much whining, uh, you know, when you think about it, if you go, let's see, NIH funding, that's going down. Uh, inpatient revenue, ooh, that's going down. Oh, we can always put it on the backs of students and charge them 10% more a year. Oh, that gigs up also. That's where it ended in places like Jefferson two years ago. Now we talk about innovation and philanthropy. What does that mean? It means that six months ago we got $110 million from Sidney Kimmel uh, to name our medical college because he thought we were the Google of healthcare. We just three weeks ago announced a gift of almost $20 million from Bernie Marcus, the founder of Home Depot, who wants Jefferson to take the best of global and integrative health with the best of traditional American health and put it together. So all of a sudden, people like to invest in fun stuff. And Jefferson, with a 190-year-old legacy, is now the fun, cool place to be. So I, I tell people, I'm an OBGYN. It's like delivering a 190-year-old baby. You know, the fact is that we're 190 years old, we're proud of it, but we're acting like a startup company. But the reality is that you're just listening to the citizens and the community and the people you serve by taking your care to wherever I am or your customer is. Well, it's even easier than that. I'm thinking of everything I can do on my supersized iPhone in every other aspect of my life, except for health. And then I'm saying, gosh, is there a technology reason I can't do that? No, the only reason we haven't done that in the past is because we haven't thought about it from a patient's perspective. So it's, it's frankly a lot easier than you might think.